Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdut's Newsstand, and I had a morning brew this morning with Joe Corella, and because I did so, I was unable to do my top five of the week, so we're going to talk about it in a separate video. Now, let me know in the comments below if you like this format better. Normally, I go through them with whoever I have on the show, and we talk about our top of the week but I still want to do that. I want to highlight the good. And there was some really good comics this week. And actually one writer made it twice, which I think is a first for my best of the week. So we're going to start out, but I do also have a pick for the absolute worst comic of the week, month, year. Yeah, it's just really bad. And maybe somebody can explain it to me down below that maybe enjoyed it. But I'm also going to give you one of those. So let's start out. I have my top five. And for number five, I actually have Silver Coin number seven. Now, this is by Ram V. And he is a fantastic creator. Spoilers. He is who is in this countdown twice. But we have seen this storyline progress. We've seen this coin that's been picked up by different people, and each time something tragic befalls them. We have no idea where this coin came from. I won't ruin it for you, but you are going to get some answers. And that's actually why this made the top list, just because it feels like we've been building up to this point for so long. A little bit of uh, answers is nice, though they are still keeping it mysterious. I will say that. Silver Coin has been a wonderful title, and it's written by somebody different each and every single time. And it's consistently good. There was one issue, it may have been three or four, where it was put into the future and it wasn't that great. And that's the only time I've actually had any criticism when it comes to that. But yeah, Silver Coin, definitely really good. The art was pretty good too. It wasn't my favorite art, but the story kept it going. So for number four... I have Harley Quinn Eat Bang Kill. Now, this is by T. Franklin. And I've talked about this book quite a few times. It is so good. It is the continuation off of the animated series that is on HBO Max. I believe it's going to be like the time in between season two and season three. And we actually get to see kind of the adventures after the wedding that fell through with Kite Man and Poison Ivy. Then we get to see more into the relationship. And there's a lot of really cool things that T. Franklin does. Like we have a character in that is a stripper in this. And she has, um, and I can't remember the disease right offhand, um, of the melanin where she's a black woman, but she's got the white spots. And I think it does such a good job. T. Franklin does a really good job of putting different representations in different forms, whether it's in the background or a character that they interact with. She does a really good job of it. And this absolutely embodies everything that is Harley Quinn better than the main continuity line does. And the art is much better, too. It looks just like the show. Just like the show. So, for number three, I actually have Batman 118. And I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I think this would be higher on my list. If we knew who continually was going to be writing Batman, but with this line kind of being in limbo, I have a hard time taking it more seriously than I would any other time. Now, don't get me wrong. This was written by Joshua Williamson, and not only was the writing great, but the art was phenomenal. But, you know, it's kind of like... I don't know how much I want to get invested until I know who's going to be the continuous writer because that's where I'm really going to put my investment in. Now, that could come to bite me on the ass because Joshua Williamson could be the ongoing writer, but I don't know that I actually believe that. Maybe, maybe we'll have to wait and see. But anyways, this issue was great. We saw kind of the fallout when it comes to Fear State. Everybody's partying. We see a really cute moment where somebody dressed up as, well, because it's Halloween, um, dressed up as Punchline asked Batman for a autograph. We see a really great moment. I, I think I laughed out loud when the, the, the 
criminals were basically so scared of Batman that they ran straight to the police and said, arrest us, arrest us. Like, we're getting the introduction of Batman Inc. back, and I think that's awesome. And it's really great start for a fun Batman. But I just got to know. I just got to know who the continuous writer is because I'm going to lean more on the detective comic side if it's going to be Bendis. I'll tell you that right now. So for number two, getting closer to the end, I have Swamp Thing. Again, Ram V. Fantastic book. Now, it did actually get continued. And Ram talked about that in my interview with him that he was going to be getting a season two, but they have now changed it to just six more issues. They're continuing the same storyline with his brother, Jacob. We see uh, Levi Kamai. He is the new avatar of the green. There is, and in this issue and a previous issue, we have seen Alec Holland. We have seen the idea. And I just want to say something real quick. I said it on my community post. But because my theories in comics are so rarely correct, I want to say I told you so. In my interview with Ram V, I asked if we were going to see more avatars of different type of, uh, whether it's the ocean or the sand. And one was the walker that he had. And I asked about that specifically. And he's kind of buffling around and mumbling and like, well, we'll, we'll see him again. We'll see him again. We'll see him again. And I called it. We are getting this kind of avatar for the sand. I think I could be wrong, but we got Floronic Man and some other fun stuff with Jacob and with Levi. And the story is fantastic. Like if you are a Swamp Thing fan, if you love Alan Moore's version of Swamp Thing, I can guarantee you, you will love this story. It is so well executed. The pacing is on point. The dialogue is on point. The interaction between familial bonds, whether it is Levi and his brother or Levi and his father, are on point. Like, I can't sit here and say enough good, but I probably will anyways, right? Um, I do think when all six issues are done, I'll go back and we'll do a complete story over about it. But we've got some time for that. But yes, absolutely. If you are not reading Swamp Thing, you are missing out on one of the best ongoing titles at DC Comics right now. Da 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 da. Drum roll. Can I do that? Da 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 da. Okay. Um. So for number one, shockingly enough, I do not have a DC title. I have Donny Cates, though. <laughs> I have crossover ten. Another one that was so good. I posted it on my community post. We actually get an idea of what is going on. And this is one of those that people are like half and half about, like half of the people absolutely love it like me and half are like, it's boring. How can you enjoy? It? Oh, it's so good. Like I absolutely love ellipses, which we actually didn't get to see in this issue, but we did get to see um, earmuffs. I'm going to spoil this one because I got to talk about it. We did get to see basically what has led up to this point and the murders of all of these different people because in this universe, we have the the transfer of superheroes from the page and they came over in real life. But we just recently found out that if you kill the person that created them, so in this issue, we're going to see Brian Michael Bendis talking, right? But if you were to kill Bendis, and they didn't, I'm not saying that, you would not see Jessica Jones. Miles Morales would disappear from this world. All of the person, all of the creators, creations rather, would die. So there is some great, and I mean hilarious dialogue in this. We actually see um, one of my favorite new um, newer artists. I don't know if I just was missing out on him or what. He did the Midnighter series too. It's um, Michael Owen, I mean, I'll put it in front. Um, absolutely. I, I've been really enjoying his art. He did the art for uh Krypton series with Robert Vendetti too. But I really like the dialogue. He's like the talking to his creations and the ones like, oh my, the girl's like, you made me do that one thing. Like it must have been something that I missed in one of his maybe Jinx World books. Yeah. Like or Blade Runner books. And it, and it's you know, alluding to something sexual and it's hilarious. And then they're telling him 
all of the people that have died, all of the authors that have died, you know, and they go, Chip Zdarsky, he's dead. And, you know, he's like, oh, my God, no, no, no. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn, he's dead. I grew up with him. He was my best friend. Da, 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 da. He goes on. Hey, Scott Snyder, he died. And it's just nothing. <laughs> the dialogue is so good in this. But then to make it even better, we actually see this egotistical maniac that's making this whole world. And it's so meta about the whole thing, right? And we see that this ego egotistical patient X, patient one, is actually <laughs> Donny Cates himself. Like, Donny is writing a world about superheroes that come into the real world who basically, if their creator dies, they die. But he's the creator of this entire world. So if he were to die, this whole thing, it's just, it's so meta. And I absolutely love this book. It is so good. I hope they keep it going. I really do. I know there's supposed to be a big reveal at issue number 12. I am looking forward to that. But every single time I pick up this book, it is phenomenal. I love it. So crossover 10. Now, I have one book. One book that was the worst out of every single book this week. And I'm not kidding. When I tell you bad, this was worse. When I say this was terrible, imagine a book that is even worse than terrible coming from somebody who tries to be optimistic. One Star Squadron. I don't know what that book was. Now, it's by Mark Russell, and I was actually kind of intrigued. I'm like, how does a communist write a capitalist book? Because the whole book is based around the idea that these, you know, C, D, and E list superheroes have to get hired for different jobs because they're obviously not getting paid. They're not in the Justice League. They need to make money, right? So, you know, if it's a birthday or if it's an event or, you know, like... You know how they have that one app where you can like hire people to talk to you or send you a video on your birthday or something like that? That's what this essentially is. But for superheroes, oh, my God, seems like a decent concept, right? Could be funny, could be amusing, has Power Girl. I love Power Girl. I don't know what I read. I am not kidding you. I was confused because I thought I was reading like, uh, one fulu over the cuckoo's nest in the beginning and then i um red tornado is he is any android but he's eating and then acting like a human is is it the joke that he can eat is it the joke that he has human emotion or it does does mark russell know that he's an android like clearly he knows he's an android and it's not just those characters. It's every single character in this book that doesn't feel like a character in anything but a satire or a parody of, is the whole thing meta? Like, is the whole thing a parody on capitalism? If so, oh boy, I, I, I don't know because I've sat here and said not all robots was fantastic by Mark Russell. And I don't normally care for Mark Russell's writing. But how can you go from not all robots to this? Maybe because it's new characters and not DC characters. But I'm not kidding you. I don't know what that book was. It tried to be one thing. It tried to be like a parody on capitalism. But then it tried to be funny and quirky for the sake of being quirk. Like, I'm sorry. I don't enjoy this. I don't enjoy necessarily the art at all. I don't enjoy, like, the concept really is there. It is. But when you dumb it down to whatever that was, I, um, I'm out. I, I, I'm out. Yeah, Power Girl's going to be the big person in this I get I don't know I don't know maybe you know maybe you understand it maybe I just maybe it's just not for me there we go that's that easy but yeah I would say absolutely not worth your time but the rest of the books holy crap so good so anyways let me know what you guys's picks were for the week let me know if you like this sort of 
concept instead of doing it on the morning brew. Either way, I will see you guys in the next one.